If you are in cybersecurity, you cannot have missed the epic SolarWinds hack that was uncovered last December. In this video, I'll tell you what I believe is the most important lesson from the attack, something you probably haven't heard elsewhere. Why is it worthwhile to focus on this particular breach? Because it's a high-profile attack where the attackers pretty much did everything right. Similar to Stuxnet, it can be viewed as a model attack for aspiring nation-state hackers who are eager to breach high-value targets and gain substantial leverage. Let's start with a brief 10-mile high recap of the attack. If you are interested in more detail, I recommend to start with the analysis published by Microsoft. Link is in the description below. SolarWinds is a popular IT management product. It basically does things like IT asset management and centralized administration. The software maker was not the target of the attack, it was SolarWinds customers. In other words, we have a clear case of a supply chain attack. Affected organizations include the US Department of Defense, Energy, Homeland Security, Commerce, State, Health, and the Treasury. How do you infiltrate deep into enemy territory when going after well-defended targets such as the US Department of Defense? The answer is by riding the trust chain. Start with an easier intermediate target that enjoys legitimate access to your ultimate targets. Rather than trying to hack your way into the ultimate target's critical networks, let them download and install a compromised piece of software deliberately. In this case, the attacker has managed to inject code into a DLL that is part of the legitimate SolarWinds software distribution. Since the software image in question is digitally signed, it also allows for some latitude when elevating privilege. It is interesting to see that the attackers sneaked in quite carefully. To quote the Microsoft report, Evidence suggests that as early as October 2019, these attackers have been testing their ability to insert code by adding empty classes. After they had assured that the injection remained undetected, they continued to go easy. The inserted malicious code is lightweight and only has the task of running a malware edit method in a parallel thread such that the DLL's normal operations are not altered or interrupted. Wait, haven't we seen something similar before? Yes, in the first version of Stuxnet, the legitimate control code is still executing on the infected PLCs while the malicious routines are running in parallel. Interesting. Finally, in the SolarWinds case, there were precautions to avoid detection by over-eager cybersecurity experts. Once loaded, the backdoor goes through an extensive list of checks to make sure it's running in an actual enterprise network and not on an analyst's machine. Masterful. This is what I call a well-planned and well-executed breach. The malicious code ultimately installs a backdoor that connects to C2 servers on the internet. Not much is to be said about the actual data theft, which was executed live on the wire in dialog mode. In this respect, it is similar to the cyber attack against the Ukraine power grid in 2015, but different from Stuxnet, where all manipulations were executed automatically without live hacker intervention. So what can we learn from this? A well-defended target has its network perimeter secured and is capable of identifying the installation and execution of rogue software. The way to get around these defenses is to ride the trust chain. Authorized access lets the attacker evade detection and infiltrate deep into production networks. In this case, it is gained via compromised software that is legitimately installed and running on the victim's computers. It's the most promising method to evade conventional security controls. An added benefit is scalability. If the platform that is used for compromise is widely distributed, it gives the attacker access to a wide range of targets. In this respect, the SolarWinds hack is a textbook example on how to breach multiple high-value targets. Have we seen anything like this in OT before? Yes, we have. Remember the Telvent breach in 2012? 
In this case, hackers compromised the remote access channel of Canadian software maker Telvent into their customer base of energy companies. The Telvent breach also tells us that when thinking about supply chain attacks, don't limit your imagination to software distribution. Remote access is an even more compelling attack vector. Based on this insight, you might want to rethink your IIoT strategy. And finally, here is the, the big one for pretty much every OT asset owner. The easiest trust chain exploit in, uh, in OT is contractor laptops. Since we know that virtually no asset owner has defenses against nomad laptops that might carry all kinds of malware, this is a safe bet. It's also what Stuxnet used for infiltration. How can you defend against this attack vector? For the SolarWinds case, the answer is by not deploying software that allows for credential harvesting deep into your networks. Anytime that you look at a software product that claims to help you with managing your several thousand endpoints from a central management server, you are looking at a huge security risk or in other words, at a single point of global compromise. While this risk wasn't identified by the experts involved in the procurement decision for DOD, as an example, is beneath me. The risk that comes with such an architecture is well known, but for some it takes a breach of epic proportions to take it seriously, as in the case of SolarWinds, who is now touting a new software architecture that is then intended to be secure by design, missing the irony that this is also an acknowledgement that the present architecture is insecure by design. For our OT-based OT management software, we avoided the, this mistake from day one by using a design that doesn't allow for the central server to reach out to and manipulate the decentral discovery nodes and everything else in the process networks where these nodes are, reside. This design decision costs us business every now and then because some customers demand more comfort, such as automatic patching. But it also makes us sleep better at night and our customers too.